Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is the fifth meteorology lesson. We're going to be discussing moisture. First off, let's discuss relative humidity and dew point. These are important concepts uh, because you will find that uh, we can do a lot of weather predicting just being familiar with the relative humidity and uh, dew point. The relative humidity is the ratio of the actual water vapor in the air to the water vapor that the air would contain if saturated. So obviously there's a maximum amount of water vapor that air, a parcel of air can hold. Beyond that, you end up with uh, precipitation or condensation. Then we have a dew point is the temperature to which a volume of air at a constant pressure must be cooled to become saturated. So reach 100% humidity. So warmer air will have a, a greater capacity to hold uh, water than cooler air. So if you remember back from uh, your early elementary school science days, when water vapor goes from an ice to a liquid, uh, we call that melting. And then when it evaporates, it uh, goes into a vapor. It can also go in reverse from a vapor to a liquid is called condensation. And then when it goes to a solid, it is freezing. If the vapor goes directly to ice, we call that deposition, and from an ice to vapor is sublimation. Pay particular attention to whether heat is taken from the environment or heat is released into the environment. Clouds form when air has become saturated. Unsaturated air will not form uh, clouds. Clouds are formed when droplets of water or ice accumulate on condensation nuclei. So there's another requirement for cloud formation is condensation nuclei. Liquid water droplets can be found at up to minus 40 degrees Celsius, but usually ice crystals at below minus 20 degrees. So here's some examples of how we can end up with clouds. The first, we have warm, moist air moving over a colder surface. Remember, colder air holds less water uh, vapor than warmer air, so the temperature will be cooled to its dew point. As it moves there to the dew point, the air becomes saturated and the water vapor condenses into water droplets. Secondly, in panel B there, we can look at the air is cooled by expansion. If we force air up the side of a mountain, as we the air goes up, it will expand. As it expands, it will cool. And as it cools, eventually it becomes saturated and the water vapor will become uh, water droplets. Last week, we can have radiation cooling. This is uh, when we have radiation fog, the warm, moist air over the earth. At nighttime, the earth loses its uh, heat through uh, radiation into space. The temperature of the air cools to the dew point. You'll find this often. Uh, cold, clear nights, let's just say, take a look at the temperature dew point spread. You might say, oh, look, this looks like a beautiful night for flying, but you don't realize that very quickly you might end up with very thick radiation fog. Precipitation occurs when vertical air currents can no longer support water droplets in suspension. So sometimes you'll notice that the precipitation is large. We have large hail, large water drops. Uh, you're outside, it starts raining, and it's really pouring down hard. And that's associated with high vertical instability, such as thunderstorms. So the water droplets uh, form, and then with air currents, they get pushed back up, where they coalesce with more uh, water droplets, and they get larger and larger and larger until they are so heavy that the vertical updrafts can no longer sustain them. That's how we ended up with the very large hail it just keeps building and building and keeps getting blasted back into the top of a thunderstorm and creating more and more ice on it. Then you have small, like small precipitation, like drizzle, it's associated with low vertical instability such from stratus clouds. You end up with fog, mist, and low stratus clouds. It's very stable. Uh, there's no vertical updrafts to keep that uh, those water droplets in the air. The chart on how we have different types of precipitation with altitude. So for example, we can have snow from the surface up into the high uh, 
altitude on the opposite side we have rain down low <clears throat> and then when we have inversions we end up with things like freezing rain so you look for example right here okay the rain falls it's cooler down here and then as it hits the ground it ends up freezing same thing with ice pellets here you can have that Talk about some different types of, of precipitation. Rain is large water droplets on the left and drizzle, small water droplets on the right. Snow are crystals of frozen water. And uh, obviously everyone knows what snow is like if you live in Canada. I think this is from Winnipeg, looks like Winnipeg anyway. On the right, we have examples of hail, they're kind of chunks of ice and they're associated with high vertical development, which is thunderstorms where uh, Precipitation is forced high into the uh, tops of the clouds where it picks up additional snow and ice, falls back down and gets blasted back up again. It keeps basically very hard ice snowballs keep forming on this uh, and, and getting bigger. Next, we have ice pellets, and ice pellets are distinct from hail. Uh, like we said, hail is from unstable air, uh, cumulonimbus clouds, thunderstorms where ice pellets are caused by a temperature inversion. We have rain at altitude and at lower altitudes, we have uh, colder air. That rain falls into the colder air and freezes on its way down and they're just frozen solid drops of ice. If uh, snow pellets, it's a kind of a hybrid, they're small grains of snow and ice. Lastly, we'll talk about snow grains. These are small opaque grains of ice and they are a frozen drizzle. So just like uh, you have ice pellets, these are when you have uh, drizzle uh, freezing up. Touched on this the last lesson, the adiabatic lapse rates. We have a, uh, it's roughly two degrees per thousand feet on average, but when it's dry, it's three degrees per thousand feet. And when it's wet, it's 1.5 degrees Celsius per thousand feet. We can predict the height of convective clouds as well as the freezing level at which point at what altitude do does the atmosphere freeze so here's an example temperature is 24 degrees and a dew point 15 what's the base of the cloud so 24 minus 15 is a nine degree spread because it's dry below the clouds three degrees a thousand feet so nine degrees divided by three three thousand feet Dew point is the temperature to which a volume of air at constant atmospheric pressure must be cooled to become saturated, so reach 100% humidity. Clouds form when air is cooled to its dew point and becomes saturated, condensing into water droplets. And uh, these clouds require condensation nuclei. Precipitation occurs when water droplets coalesce and become too massive to be suspended in the air. The standard lapse rates are 1.9 to 8 degrees Celsius per thousand feet. Saturated, so when it's wet, it's 1.5 degrees Celsius per thousand feet and dry is 3 degrees Celsius per thousand feet. What type of precipitation is most likely to form in an inversion? So remember, an inversion is when the temperature increases with altitude. So up high, it'd be warm. So let's say you have rain and then the ice, or sorry, the rain falls into colder air below. So let's go through these A rain. Nope, uh, that's just it's, it would stay as uh, rain. Um, ice pellets. So this is the correct answer here is ice pellets. So if we recall, uh, if we draw a line here and it's raining here, it's raining, and now all of a sudden it's cold, cold and hot. Okay. And then it comes here and then all of a sudden it starts cooling, cooling down and uh, hitting the ground as solid chunks of ice. So hail is not correct because remember hail is not from an inversion, it's from thunderstorms and unstable air. And snow is not correct either. What type of precipitation is most likely to form when there is extensive vertical instability? So we kind of briefly touched on this last question, the correct answer is going to be hail. So remember what happens with hail, the precipitation falls and then gets brought back up from the vertical updrafts, at which point more moisture is accreted on to the existing hail particles. And the more instability, the more updrafts we have, the larger hail we end up getting. 
What conditions do not need to be present for clouds to form? So A, uh, water vapor. So recall, we do need water vapor for clouds to form. B, condensation nuclei. So we need condensation nuclei. We need something for that water vapor to condense onto. C, water droplets. Well, no, that's not correct. We don't need water droplets for clouds to form. Clouds form and you get water droplets. D, temperature equals dew point. You know, the air has to be saturated for the water vapor to condense into uh, water droplets. Correct answer, C, water droplets. So here's a question that uh, we'll see if you can remember how to do, because uh, you're very likely to get it on your test. The temperature at sea level is 12 degrees Celsius and the dew point is six degrees Celsius. What is the base of the clouds? So the temperature dew point spread is six degrees Celsius and it's dry. So the dry adiabatic lapse rate is three degrees per thousand feet. So six divided by three is 2,000 feet. There we go, 2,000 feet. Next question, what is the freezing level? So now we're at six degrees Celsius and we're in clouds. And so the wet adiabatic lapse rate is 1.5 degrees per thousand feet. So six degrees divided by 1.5 is 4,000, 4, right? Because it's 1.5 per thousand feet. Plus we're already at 2,000 feet already. So 4,000 plus 2,000 is 6,000 feet is the freezing level. So that concludes this lesson. Hopefully uh, this last question, you can understand how to do it. And you might wanna do some practice on your own just to kind of really get it in your mind because it, it will come up again and again in your, uh, in your training. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in our next lesson.